we have uh, just gone over a series of videos uh, going over some basic properties of some elementary functions that you see in your algebra and trigonometry classes and pre-calculus. Uh, another course where you're going to see a lot of functions is probability and statistics. And some of you may have had a, a probability and statistics class in college or in high school. Uh, certainly you should have studied at least a little bit of probability and statistics somewhere along through your, uh, your uh, K-12. Uh, curriculum and the probably the most important not probably definitely the most important uh, function in the study of statistics is the normal probability density function so and in uh, statistics we're interested in a PDF a probability density function and a CDF a cumulative density function and a normal probability density function this is the PDF here is the formula for it um, of course most of these things are constants uh, and this is actually kind of a remarkable formula because it puts together a lot of the most basic constants. Uh, some of the most basic uh, constants in mathematics are the most interesting ones. One, uh, I guess you sort of have a coefficient of negative one here. Two, um, pi, the square root, and then e. Those are all specific constants from arithmetic that are extremely important in mathematics. Then you also have these other constants called parameters. Mu is, is uh, generally used in statistics to be the mean or average value of the function. And so that's, or, or the average, yeah, the average input there. Uh, and that's going to be a, a specific constant. So for different mu's, you get different uh, normal distributions. And sigma is uh, the standard deviation. So sigma is here. Sigma square is here, which is sigma square is actually called the variance. Uh, and so those are things. So mu is going to measure where the center of this distribution is. Sigma is going to measure how spread out it is. But this gives you a family. It's not just one function, but a whole family of functions. Uh, the standard one is when you let sigma be 1. So this kind of disappears. You can erase the sigma here because that's 1. And you can erase the mu because it's 0. So if you take mu is 0 and sigma is 1 in this formula, you get the graph that we have here. Notice it is distorted and, and, and uh, zoomed in quite a bit, so it's not a square scale. We've got 0 to 0 0.5 is just this far here, and this whole thing doesn't even make it up to 0 0.5. It's like 4, 0.45 or so. Okay. Notice that the graph is always above the x-axis, which is a, a characteristic of, uh, of a PDF. It's always on or above the x-axis. This one, if you take the limit as x goes to infinity or minus infinity, look what happens. Whether you go to infinity or minus infinity, when you square this, you're going to get a positive number. Uh, but it's And then the sigma is positive, the 2 is positive. That's all going to be positive, but the negative in front makes it a negative. So we got e to a power that's a negative number, which is getting larger and larger and larger in absolute value. Just multiply by some positive constant. That means this is always going to be a positive number, but it's going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as x goes to infinity or negative infinity. So the limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity is zero. So this thing is actually always above the x-axis, but it gets closer and closer to zero as we go out. The it turns out that uh, the maximum happens right at when x is mu, or if for the normal standard normal one when x is zero. And that happens right there. How high it is depends on the value of sigma. It's not quite 0.4 here. It's a little bit, it's close to 0.4, but not exactly. And we get at what's called a nice bell-shaped curve here. So if you notice, it's increasing concave up here. Some point here, actually, I know exactly where it is. It's exactly at negative 1. Right there, there's a point of inflection. Remember, a point of inflection or inflection point is when a graph changes concavity. In this case, it's from concave up like a right side up bowl to concave down. Then it increases but concave down up to the maximum right there at the mean, which is zero. And then it decreases and it has another inflection point right here at positive one right there. And then it switches from, it's still decreasing but from concave down to concave up. Now, it turns out in probability theory that areas under this PDF between it and the x-axis are probabilities and the sum of all the probabilities has to be 1, so the total area between this curve and the x-axis is actually just 1. That's actually not a super easy thing to prove. Uh, that's actually a really good project for a Calculus 3 class. 
Now, um, associated with this is a cumulative density function, so that if you take uh, any particular x value, you're talking about the area under this curve to the left of that point and above the x-axis, which is a cumulative probability, and it's going to increase from 0 to 1, actually has asymptotes on both sides, and this is a function, this is an actually an interesting function because it's not an elementary function. It's not a function that you can just write up, down, built up out of things like abstract, multiply, divide, powers, roots, trig functions, exponentials, and so forth. Um, but it, nevertheless, it is a function that, that exists. And there is, uh, uh, well, the, the one for this one, this is a, a, probably a different one actually, but it's, it's, uh, it's very similar to a, uh, what it would look like for a normal distribution, not particularly that one, but some normal distribution, would have a similar shape to this. In fact, any cumulative density function for what's called a continuous distribution will always be a continuous, non-decreasing so uh, function. So it could be level for a while, but it never decreases. So as we go to left or right, it increases. And either it's 0 on the left and 1 on the right, or it has an asymptote of 0 on the left and or an asymptote of 1 on the right. So certainly the limit as x goes to minus infinity of the CDF is always 0, and the limit as x goes to infinity of the CDF is always 1, and it is a continuous function. So anytime you have what's called a continuous distribution, it means that the CDF, the cumulative density function, is actually a continuous function, whether or not the PDF is. The normal probability density function, the PDF, is also continuous. So there's a lot more uh, detail about PDFs and CDFs for continuous distributions in my uh, third playlist uh, from statistics.